okay so that was about mirror just as we had in autocad right very simple uh, just that your uh, option the symbols might be changed but the commands are very much similar okay you have added commands okay because this is 3d modeling we are what we are seeing so uh, some extra features would be required some extra options would be required that will make the work easier but uh, all those which we saw are also included here right in autocad what we saw trim and all these basic features circles etc okay and do remember this bottom left if you are confused about what to do next what to select you please look at the bottom left prompt bar okay that will give you the idea of what to do next whether to select the axis line whether to select the objects right clear so far any doubts okay then the axis okay so in this way you can use the mirror option let me clear the screen now what if you want to mirror but you want to delete the original and you want to keep only the mirrored part so for that this option is there symmetry okay let's see i suppose I again draw a circle okay i draw a reference line okay i want to mirror this circle about this line but i want to delete this circle i just want to keep my mirrored circle so i can choose this circle i can choose this symmetry option okay and i can select this axis so this circle is symmetry about symmetrical about this axis but the original circle is deleted now so in, for this command for this tool you can use the symmetry option okay if you want to do this uh in this this is translate translate is nothing but if you want to move things this is rotate which i already told you by mouse scale is nothing but if you want to change the scale of the if you want to make it bigger or smaller offset offset is important okay let's select let's see what this option offset option does suppose you created a line okay suppose you created a line like this now you want to move move this line upward or downward or if you want to offset it at a distance so you can just select this offset tool now see a dotted blue line is coming so you can offset this line wherever you want at how much how much distance you want you can again uh, change the distance as per your required value i am suppose i am giving this to 50 okay so this line is offset 50 okay so by this offset tool so this was the important function of the offset tool okay so these features are all important while drawing any sketch for a part okay this thing this thing and this thing so try to practice sketching by uh, drawing any desired profile which comes to your mind uh, by using all these tools and you will uh, get familiar with all these tools very quickly okay now let's clear this uh, window so there is one more important thing which i need to talk about it's called the fully defined constraint okay what it means is like suppose you have drawn a rectangle here uh, you have drawn a rectangle here okay a corner rectangle now see this corner rectangle is now not defined because why because this side and this side is not fixed why because you have not defined the value how big it is what is the size of this thing so you can uh, move the rectangle wherever you want okay like this it is not fixed the size is not fixed so what you have to do to con right you understand the need for constraints that's a very basic question why do you want to constrain the drawing okay why do you want to constrain the scratch why is it important it is important because it will fix the dimensions and any dimensions that any feature that you're going to do after that will not affect these previous features okay that's why you need to constrain it right using different features that we have okay clear right why why do we have to constrain or should i explain again
okay then so in this rectangle you have to provide the size okay of the rectangle for that you have to click on constraint and you have to give this side as something whatever you want like 50 this thing okay and you want to constraint again click on constraint and you want to give the length of this rectangle uh, suppose I want it 100 now see this whole figure is green colored green colored okay every side is green colored this means that this rectangle is fully defined and now whatever you do to move the rectangle it can't be moved okay so before creating any part you have to make sure that your sketch is fully defined okay the sketch is green colored now see if I have created a circle like this okay so what I have to do to fully define the circle first of all you have to provide the size of the circle what is the radius so for that I am giving the constraint and clicking the circle then I am telling its diameter to be 50 mm okay now see after, even after giving the size of this circle the diameter 50 this circle is not green what does it mean it means that it is not fully defined why because see you can also move you can still move this circle wherever you want in the screen it is not fixed so what you what you have to do to fix this circle you have to define this circle with respect to a fixed point and we know that origin origin is always fixed in this plane so we can define this circle with respect to this origin for that what i am doing is i am clicking this constraint button and i am constraint i am selecting this center of the circle and this origin okay now you can see the distance between these two centers okay these two points so i'm uh, I'm, i want to give the horizontal distance between these two points so i am uh, what I am what doing what I am clicking the right click button and I am selecting horizontal measure distance measure direction so it gives the horizontal direction now I am setting the horizontal direction suppose I want it to be 100 mm click 100 mm okay you see not just constraining the dimensions like for example if he had when he when he gave d50 diameter as 50 for that circle it should have uh, taken it to be fully constrained right as we as we might as we might think but not only do you have to define the dimension you also have to define the relationship of that entity with respect to a fixed entity okay that is clear right that you also have to constrain it with respect to the space okay so that it should not move otherwise because even after specifying 50 as diameter it was still moving because we did not define its position with respect to a fixed point so that fixed point was taken as the origin and even you see even after specifying the horizontal one it is not fully constrained because it can move in the vertical space right so he'll specify now the vertical and then it will be fully constrained it is now also not green colored means it is not fully defined why because i can move this up and down okay it is not constrained in a y direction what i'm going to do i'm going to click on the constraint tool and i'm going to select this center of the circle and this origin and I'm going to right click and I'm going to give a vertical measure direction. So I'm going giving this vertical measure direction as suppose 50. Okay. So now see this circle is green colored means it is fully defined. Fully defined means you can't move this circle anymore. Okay. This is completely defined in this plane. So this is an important concept. And if you want to um, do a part modeling, first of all, you have to make and you have to ensure that your sketch is fully defined because it will not get you in trouble in the later stages of part modeling okay so now let's see different types of constraints first okay now let's uh, first see the constraint constraint coincidence what coincidence means is let me show you okay suppose i am choosing a line like this and i am choosing another line like this uh, like this okay now what i want is i want this line okay to be coincident on this line so what i can do is i can click on this point and i can place the control button and also click on this line and i have to i am going to choose this thing constraints defined in dialog box click on this Okay, some network issue here. Coincident on this line. Please. Have you observed defining the constraint like relationship between these, these two entities? If, if any, 
any two entities that you want to uh, define a relationship to you have to select those entities right one entity and then control press the other entity and once you click on that constraint defining dialog box it will give you the available options okay not all the constraints but constraint applicable to this that you have selected okay the two lines that we selected based out of this what relationship can you have distance length midpoint vertical horizontal coincidence fix right it will not give you tangency because there is no circle involved here no fillet involved no tangency here right so what all options are available it will give you so that is another feature right that you can specify only what can be specified okay yet the other options will not be activated clear right okay then okay so like this you can use the coincident constraint okay the other constraint is coincentricity let's see how it works suppose this is the circle and this is another circle like this now what you want is would you want these two circles to be concentric that is they should have the same center so what i'm doing doing is i'm selecting both the circles i'm pressing on this tool and i'm selecting coincidence or no sorry coincentricity okay because i want their centers to be same and click on okay see these circles are now concentric another constraint is tangency tangency suppose i have drawn a line like this okay now what i want is i want this line to be tangent to this circle so i'm selecting this line and this line and i'm clicking on this constraint dialog box and i'm clicking this tangency button this line is tangent to this circle click okay now another thing is parallel parallel thing like you can do one line okay and draw another line like this but you want these two lines to be parallel select these two lines click on the constraint dialog box and you can select here parallelism okay click on this thing these two lines will be parallel okay now another thing is perpendicularity which is like the same thing which can be done by lines like a line is like this another line is like this okay click on these two lines this line and this line and click on this constraint dialog box and click perpendicular so these two lines will be perpendicular okay so in this way you can use various constraints by choosing this constraint dialog box okay now you can also have more than one constraints so whatever constraints you want just click on it and press okay first you have to select what figure you have to constraint okay what sketch you have to constraint so this is the constraint definition in dialog you observe that even there are symbols right once you have defined a constraint there are symbols there so that gives you another idea of what constraint is applied on these entities okay another useful feature all these have symbol like concentricity you see these two right concentric symbol here and tangency you have that green bar right and parallelism perpendicularity you see for perpendicularity you have it like here parallelism if you can observe at the bottom two parallel lines green so as for coincident you have that point so they give you the idea of what constraint is applied okay the box okay now i'm going to clear the screen okay but first of all i'm going to uh, tell you one more less important thing uh, let's see suppose i want to do a isometric view so what i can do is i can choose this tool okay click on this it will be coming coming in isometric view now see this is a 3d compass now what a 3d compass does is suppose i told you how to drag okay how to drag this and how to rotate this and how to zoom in or zoom out this okay so you can also use this 3d compass to rotate like suppose this thing if you want to rotate about z axis click here and move your mouse so it will be rotated rotated around z axis okay if you want to drag along x axis so you can click on this x axis and you, you move your mouse so you can drag this in x axis drag this in y axis you can drag this in z axis okay rotate this in x y so you can use this 3d compass to rotate or drag okay so this is how 3d compass also can be used but i will suggest you to use mouse whenever you need to uh, drag rotate or zoom okay 
and if you want normal then you can just click this button the sketch will come normal okay okay so now let's move ahead and see how we can convert these sketches into parts first of all i am going to clear the sketches on my screen selecting all and deleting it now let let's see how we can create a part okay with a sketch okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a center rectangle on my screen okay like this and now i'm gonna exit my sketch to exit the sketch you have to click this button okay this tool exit sketch exit workbench okay so when you come out of the workbench or the sketch it looks something like this okay now what i want to do is i want to extrude this circle rectangle into a cuboid to make it up as a part so to extrude it or to pad it you have to use the option pad so this is my pad tool which you can use to extrude the rectangle into a cuboid okay so i'm going to use this pad option so i'm gonna click on this pad a pad definition dialog box will come like this okay so now let's see what up to what length i'm gonna extrude it so that you can type here okay you can increase the length or you can type any desired length what you want okay if you want to see a preview of how it looks you can click here preview okay so it looks something like this now if you want uh, to get this part uh, made the, make this part then you can you can click okay here okay if you are sure that this is the part you want then you can click okay so i have turned the rectangle into a cuboid it's a part now basically i have turned a 2d drawing into the 3d 3d drawing okay <clears throat> Now let's see uh, some more features of this pad okay if i drop if i click on the drop down button you can see pad okay you can see here drafted filleted pad and you can see multi pad we are mostly going to use you see just that they have changed the name of uh, what do you call extrude to pad in catia you call it pad okay so same feature the name is different and different options that we have that he is going to explain use the pad option only now let's see if i want to draw a cylinder on the top surface of this cuboid so what i have to do is i have to click on this top surface to select the top surface now i am going to click the sketch button here the sketch option this one so when i am going to click the sketch option it comes normal to that plane of the cuboid now i can draw a cylinder for drawing a cylinder what i have to do is i have to draw a circle and then extrude it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to draw a circle here like this and i'm going to exit this sketch again okay clicking here now what i'm going to do is i'm again using pad option i'm using pad and now i can give the length of the cylinder here suppose i want it to be 50 only so i can click okay if you want to see preview you can click preview and if you want to uh, if you are final with your design then you can see click okay so like this a cylinder is extruded on the cuboid okay you can check this out by rotating the 3d object okay by clicking keep holding the right click button and scroll button together and moving your mouse okay if you want to drag this you can just click on the um, scrolling button keep clicking it and move your mouse and if you want to zoom in and zoom out then keep clicking the scroll button just click the right click button button of the mouse once and then move your mouse up and down to zoom in and zoom out okay the same thing which i told you earlier so in this way you can create a 2d drawing into a 3d drawing convert you can convert it okay now let's see one more feature okay suppose i want to create various sketches on this this part of the design okay this part of the cuboid so i am clicking this face okay now i am going to do a sketch on this face so i am clicking the sketch option a sketch tool now okay let me drag it to the center of the screen now what i am going to do is i am going to create some sketches here i am going to create a circle like this i am going to create a center rectangle like this okay and also i am going to create a random profile here something like this okay any random profile okay and i'm gonna create one ellipse here uh, like this this big okay like this 
now let's use the multipad feature okay so for using the multipad feature let's first exit this sketch whenever you want to extrude or whenever you want to pad something you have to exit the sketch so click exit workbench okay now if you want to do it in isometric view you can click here you see all those options are selected right you can either go to pad and select the features or you can even uh, select the features and then uh, click pad okay two two ways to do it okay okay this is the isometric view but we are going to sketch we have sketched on the right side on the bottom side of the figure so we are going here okay like this i am rotating it like this okay so you can see better now what i am going to do is i am going to uh, click click on the drop down menu of pad and i am going to select multi pad feature like this so in multi pad feature what you, what you can do is you can give the length of extrusion of all the elements which you have of all the sketches you have drawn at once like suppose if you have clicked on this one so this thing is highlighted this profile if you want this to extrude or if you want this to pad uh, suppose 30 mm so you can click on 30 okay now like i'm clicking next this one this this rectangle so suppose i am going to pad it uh 80 mm so i'm going to click 80 now this thing ellipse i'm going to pad it to 10 mm like this and this circle i'm going to pad to uh, 60 mm okay now if you click, click preview so see all the different profiles have been paired okay and our uh, and the length are all different which you have given here so you can pair different profiles at the same time of different lengths by using the multi pad feature if you click okay then it's done okay so you are getting a part like you see pad and multi pad so there that's another feature that they gave that if i want to have multiple features with multiple heights what do i do do i go to pad each and every one of them individually or do i have an option that can specify different heights for that pad right different extrusion heights are possible which is one selection right you go to multi pad specify different heights or different pad lengths basically so that feature is quite useful isn't it no doubts right i believe quite simple like this okay so this is the pad and multi pad feature which will be the most common used tool by you if you want to draw any part also whatever you have used the pad feature whenever you have used the pad feature and whatever feature you have used you can see on this pad, you, you can see on this tree branch tree so this is my pad one okay this is my pad two this is multi pad what i have used and if you want to delete you can just right click and click delete okay and you can click on okay or you can just select this and press the delete button on your keyboard it will delete the pad feature or any feature which you, which you want so now let's move to the other feature which is the pocket feature or pocket tool so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna click on this surface i'm gonna sketch on this surface and i'm gonna create a circular profile on this surface like this okay now i'm gonna exit it exit this sketch and now i'm using the pocket feature the so pocket is the opposite of pad pad is what creating something creating adding the material okay pocket is what removing the material so if i select this pocket feature what it does is it removes the element in a cylindrical form so I have drawn a circle to remove the element in a cylindrical form. So now if you want to remove the element for, for about uh, so let's say 40 mm. The depth, the depth is 40 mm. Okay. So now you can click on preview like this and you can click on OK now. So it removed the element like this pocket feature. So in order to remove material, in order to remove something, in order to create a hole or something, you can use the pocket feature and this this multi pocket feature is uh, just the opposite of multi pad feature actually okay now let's uh, delete this pocket feature or uh, delete it pad and pocket are the most important features 
and the most common features which you will be using okay let's delete this pad also okay sorry not paste delete okay now let's see another feature this is called shaft feature for shaft feature i am again going to sketch something on xy plane okay so i am let's suppose i am sketching a a rectangle uh, like this okay you can also give the constraints give the dimensions i am just not doing it for your like it's just example to show you so now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna exit my sketch okay and i'm gonna click the isometric view here so you can see better and now i'm gonna use this shaft feature shaft okay in shaft feature you have to select you have to select some profile selection sketch file so this sketch is already selected so it's okay now shaft feature what it does is it it does the pad function but in a rotation manner you will see like like see you have to select an axis so suppose i am selecting this axis so what it does is it it produces a material it adds material in a circular manner okay we have done the rotation about this axis and adding and adding the material you can also not do the complete 360 degree rotation you can also adjust the degree of rotation like this okay like this or if you want to make a cylinder you can just keep 360 degree and you can preview it okay so the rectangle has now become a cylinder because we have rotated the rectangle about one of its axis you can click ok and this will be a cylinder now so shaft feature is like making a circular objects uh, or a, any profile which you have to rotate about the axis so suppose you want to make a bearing okay ball bearing so let's see how you can do that first of all i'm gonna delete this okay now i'm gonna again go to sketch select any plane and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna create a circle and i'm gonna divide this circle into two and then i'm gonna trim this upper part of the circle so this is a semicircle now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna exit the sketch and i'm gonna use the shaft feature okay 360 degree is sketch is selected which exists about this axis so you will see it creates a ball bearing or a bearing or a circular ball type object so like this this feature is used okay this groove this groove is basically the opposite of shaft let's see how uh, let's delete this Clear, right the the four most common features you can say first one was your pad that's basically extrude in solidworks okay that you want to extend a sketch in the third direction okay uh, and if you want to remove the material then you have pocket okay so the exact opposite of pad is pocket pad adds the material pocket removes the material okay linearly but when it comes to this uh, shaft that is basically a revolve okay in simple words in solidworks you call it revolve okay so if you want to have this uh, cylindrical kind of shapes then you go for revolve adding up of material if you want to remove material just like you had pad and pocket you have revolve and groove okay four most common features you can say okay any doubts in today's class I mean lab exercise. No right, because it's already eleven thirty. Clear right? Okay then. Okay then. And all the best for your mid exams. Okay, prepare well.
ഓക്കെ ദാങ്ക് യു